Welcome to the week two Padlet recap. Here's how to order. First thing I just want to say is thank you to everyone who's currently uh, making use of the Padlets. They are part of your participation and engagement opportunities. So if you are thinking about how you're wanting to contest for those 20 points, that's part of the platform. Using one of our standard workplace tools, the Padlet, and engaging with the questions on the reflection, clarification, and observation. Those behaviors as well, reflection, clarification, observation, they are part of the behaviors that will make it easier for you to write up your ePortfolio over time. And the sort of casual engagement in a different forum gives you a chance to sort of warm up your forum engagement skills that help you gain points inside the model forum. So it's an interlinked cross-wired training exercise with work-related outcomes. In case you're wondering why we're doing Padlets, we're doing Padlets because Miro isn't as straightforward to use in response. Now, the questions that we've got this week, we've had a question around um, a clarification of what do I expect, what are my expectations around the portfolio. Uh, there are two things I want to address up front. First is I am intentionally not setting guidelines for what the ePortfolio must look like, nor am I recording videos on how to create pages or content inside. This is a deliberate decision because what I want you to do with the ePortfolio software is engage in a self-education process similar to that which you would use whilst in a workplace. Uh, similar to what you would use whilst test driving a new platform for yourself. So there's a very specific behavior here, and that is get the manual, read the manual, explore, test and play, cross-check with fellow users. And one of the things about the tutorials and the seminars and the other, and the Wattle and all these other places, including now the slow and gentle emergence of WeChat back channels and Facebook chats and everything else. Big hello out there to the Facebook chat teams. Good to have you on board. What we are wanting is that peer support, peer learn. So you're looking sideways to each other going, all right, what are you, how are you doing? What are you doing? What's working for you? So that's why there's no training videos on how to make the ePortfolio. The in terms of expectations about what the content should be and things like marking rubrics, uh, this links into the next question that we had in the Padlet was some clarification around the technology analysis. Now, the ETA, the purpose of the assignment is that it's a planning, uh, it's a project proposal document. You're going to explain to me in the course of this assignment what it is you want to do for your semester length project what platform you want to use, the target audience you want to have in mind, the target audience, the platform users, and a bit of the marketing theory to support what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. You are going to be able to use an existing platform. So if you already have a Twitter account or an Instagram account, a TikTok account, uh, WeChat, Weibo, um, Twitch stream, whatever it is you currently have in the portfolio, if you want to extend on that, you can. And a big shout out to the LinkedIn teams who are starting to work towards we're going to build our LinkedIn portfolio for the semester. That's one of the processes. That's a really good, clear use of the ETA. Set up what your game plan is for your LinkedIn. Go out and deliver on it. But with that document, uh, you don't have to create a new thing if you already have something in play, but at the same time, if you feel like you want to create a brand new experience, a new portfolio, then you're free to do that. With the ePortfolio and the ETA, there were both questions around uh, guidelines and rubrics. And what I want to just draw your attention to is back over at the Waddle site. It helps if I've got the right uh, window open in the background, but say la vie. When you log into Waddle, I've got Waddle set into the compressed mode, rather than it being the scroll of death, loading everything for all 12 weeks, plus the assessment and the assets 
background, I've got it set down to compressed. So you then need to follow through. So in this case, uh, it's click the week, click the link in order to access the resources. And you'll see that there's a bucket. Like in one of the least useful interface things I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of dumb things in Waddle, that's meaningless. That just says stuff is there. It should rather have a blinky light saying stuff's here you haven't looked at. But here's the assessments. So scroll down past the opening blurb, which has been dramatically cut back because it annoyed me during a live demonstration the other night, so I've moved all the content elsewhere. We have a breakdown on the assessment uh, and a range of supporting materials for the assessment. So if we take the technology analysis as the first one, your first link up here is to the turn it in for the assessment submission. We have a video explaining my what I want to see people try to achieve with the assignment task. That video is out on YouTube and also mirrored on Echo 360. I'm using multiple distribution because not everyone's got access to YouTube and not everyone's got the patience to sit through the Echo 360 30 seconds of copyright doom. Also, not everyone gets access to decent Echo 360. They are the same video. Just to reassure you, they're the same video. We also have a folder here uh, that ha contains additional material. So when you see folders in the Waddle layout, they are basically, again, click through because rather than cluttering the hell out of the layout, I'm only cluttering the minor out of the layout. And I'm sticking things into folders to make it less scroll of doomy. It's still very scroll of doomy. But behind the assessment folder, you'll see that there's a couple of documents. Uh, any templates you need or any supporting documents that I think will be valuable will be there. Uh, this particular Word document here, the class participation document, it is a rundown of what is my expectations, and that includes the marking rubric. It includes guidelines as to what to expect, what to... Uh, and for each section as well. So there's a bit of a... there's an overall marking criteria, um, and there's a breakdown. That's because I'm looking at the class petition, participation folder, not the ETAG folder. So the e-technology analysis, uh, I am asking you to do, part of the e-tech is to do, the ETA asks for timelines, Gantt charts, and illustrations of that consider you've mapped out what you need to do over time, and I've put in a Gantt chart template. Um, ETA talks about what it is that I want you to achieve, how do I, what do I see as uh, ways to explain that expectation, what's the weighting for each section, and so it gives you the breakdown. One of the things in here is there is an expectation that there will be a plan and the plan will show me that you have thought about how you're getting from point A to point Z and all the letters of the alphabet that you want to use on the way through and where you're stopping, where you're skipping, where you're going ahead. It's up there for you to have a look at. Please give it a review. Um, if Again, make use of the Padlet and the feedback loops to let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see added, if there's anything else would be super useful to know about or find out about. Uh, the other element that was up on the radar was a discussion around uh, a question with regards to citations, Google Scholar, and expectations. Uh, want to mention this, that I do expect you to use theory, marketing theory, during the semester, uh, partly because it makes life easier, and entirely because it makes life easier. So for those of you who are going to be working on your LinkedIn, you have a whole series of work that's been done out there about how to use LinkedIn, what people are doing with LinkedIn, market segmentation around it. Um, so the first reference up on uh, that when you search Google Scholar for the name of the software package that you're going to be using, you will get to see a range of research about it. And the top one on the list there is you know, performing identity on Facebook and LinkedIn. Go have a look at this and see how this could either guide you or explain what it is you plan on doing, 
follow the guidelines. Theory is a big part of our course um, and applying theory is an even bigger part. So at the end of each week's lecture you'll see that there's a couple of slides dedicated to talking through the reading of the week, how I'm using it, what I see the value of it, uh, to get you used to just casually grabbing reference and support to go um, justify your decisions and justify what you're doing. In terms of citation, uh, Google is your best friend in the universe for this. The little quotation marks there. You click on that, you get yourself a citation. I'm a big fan of the APA style guide, so that's the one I use. Use whichever one you're strongest with. So I don't have a preference. I think um, the medical and legal footnoting approach is absolute nightmare. Um, so I avoid it myself personally. But if it's what you do well, it's what you do. So work to your strengths, uh, run with what suits you best. But definitely always make use of your, uh, your Google Scholar asset here of, oh, I need to put my reference list together. I will look up the name of the paper. I will get the correct APA style guide from Google. I'll put that into my document. So it's the one of the few places where copy and paste is your absolute best friend in the world in this business. And, uh, Last thing on the Padlets is thank you again. Thank you to everyone who's uh, participating and playing along. We are going to be doing this across the whole of the semester. So those of you who are in early, excellent. The innovation adoption curve is doing its thing properly. Those of you who pick in over the next few weeks, also welcome aboard. Uh, there's no time like whenever you feel like to get in and start using it. So I appreciate everyone for using the, giving us that closed loop of you ask questions, I can get, can respond. Uh, last thing I want to mention on the Padlets is there's a couple of really interesting comments uh, I just want to quickly shout out to is it's not just the points of uncertainty I look at, I do read the uh, other things. Uh, basically, big shout out to the people who are finding these videos useful, awesome, gives me justification to keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, glad to see that the tutorial is kicking off and things are going uh, quite nicely uh, for you out there. Really keen to see, uh, for you to work with Alex to see what you can build as a community with that uh, hybrid space of on the Zoom and in the room. Otherwise, I will see you at one of the live seminars or you'll see me on one of the pre-recorded sessions.